doing, I don't know, six foot statues, uh, replicas of the Eiffel Tower or anything like that. Nothing intricate. Um, so I know some of you have experience, some of you don't. That's okay. My name is Scott Fuller. I am a United Church of Christ minister. I'm a chaplain. I have training in spiritual correction. And I've been folding origami for, gosh, 33, 35 years. Off and on. It's not an obsession. It's something I've done. I ended up here doing this project and doing my cards in there by just noticing over time how origami affected my life. I uh, currently teach origami to a group of seniors at my work. I work at a nonprofit designed to keep senior citizens in their homes and not in nursing homes. So we have day centers, we do activities. Well, I had this habit or rather this hobby I do, I call it lunchtime origami therapy. And I developed it about 10 years ago because I was stressed out at work. I mean, we've all had jobs, you're a pastor, I believe you said? Yeah, so no, no stress in pastoring, <laughs> right? No, 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 no. clergy's, yeah, you only work one day, but that's what we do. <laughs> so I would get stressed out at work. I worked uh, at the VA hospital in Nashville, Tennessee. So I was really stressed out. And during lunchtime, I had an hour for lunch. I wolfed down my lunch and then folded. And what I noticed over time was that my stress level decreased. Just said, oh, that's cool, kept on folding. Well, when I started coming, uh, when I came to Pittsburgh, to start teaching seniors. Um, we went through this long, cold winter. And the participants who were in my groups a nurse came up to me one day and said, you know, it's weird, these people, we haven't had to adjust their medication over the winter. Many of them, were, I have one woman who is bipolar, several who suffer from depression. So normally in the winter months, you have to increase those meds and do other talk therapies, interventions, to help people through. And they said, they haven't needed it. It's weird. So again, I shrugged. We did that. Moving on. And... Again, one of, uh, we were having dinner one night with a friend of ours from, uh, who teaches down at Candler in uh, Divinity School in Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. And she was asking what I was doing. And I told her, she said, oh, it's your spiritual discipline. And I went, oh. <laughs> Let's take a look at that. And that's how this project got started. You know, the little uh, business card in there. I, uh, it's, I call it a project because I don't know where it's going. We're just going to, uh, uh, I'm taking a look at how origami and spirituality intersect and what we can use from that to better our own lives. I start with three ideas about God, three simple ideas. God is creative. Outside God is always creating new things, new uh, you know, new plants are coming up all the time. New, you know, life is erupting all around us. Um, God is relational, very spiritual. God is with us, and God is omnipresent. So, origami as a type of prayer or a type of practice to help us grow together with God. That's what the project is about. Um, so let's take a look at uh, several of the ways we can use origami. Now in your packet I have put a magazine, a magazine page. The page itself is irrelevant. Okay, there's, there's nothing on this page that is profound. <laughs> I was trying to figure out. What it was. It's funny how we do that, right? It's like there's a clue in here somewhere. <laughs> Bug collecting at Carnegie. Yeah, I, I, actually, yes, I just took a Carnegie magazine that we had about heading for recycling, took a, a box cutter to it, and sliced off pages. Um, the idea about origami, the neat thing I found, 
is that you never, ever run out of paper. Despite computers, you know, the promise of computers back in the 80s was that we're going to be a paperless society by the year 2000. If anything, I am in a wash in more paper than ever before. So I, in, in all my years of folding origami, um, I've never had to, to really go out of my way to find paper. At work, even back at the, the VA in Nashville, there were always memos. There were always, you know, nasty grams. Somebody upset about somebody else and passive aggressively sending a note through. Rachel Held Evans, uh, who was here last year, had a great article that she wrote in 2012 about how she takes her hate mail. You know, of course, she's uh, a great author, but whenever you do something out in public, especially in this day and age, people send hateful messages. And she was worn down by it. So someone taught her origami, and she wrote an article about how she takes these things. So if, as a pastor, how many pastors do we have here? All, all right. So you, have you ever received an anonymous note? Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've received several. Saying, uh, some people are upset about the sermon you preached or about how you handled the situation. Those are great things to use. So real quick, <laughs> origami usually starts with a square sheet of paper. Real easy to make a square out of a rectangle, more or less. All you do is fold the top side to the side, the top to the side, so, and you make a triangle, okay? Try to get your size lined up, try to get that corner to a neat point, and then crease, okay? So you're gonna end up with something like this, okay? Now, Get my scissors out here. You're gonna take. You're gonna, everybody be nice and share. <laughs> um, you gotta take this bottom half, and you can either cut right across there, or if you want a line, you can fold up like this and crease and fold. And that's all that's required. You cut off that bottom half. You have a perfect square, and you are ready to go, right? Hold up that bottom part. And it doesn't even matter if, you know, if there's already a folded. You, you open up a letter, it's tri-folded, you know, just cut. And there you go. And what I've noticed, magazine articles are great. They've got this sort of lamination on them. You can't do, you know, something very intricate with it, especially if this paper's kind of thick. Uh, so you won't be able to do you know, something really, really intricate. But at the level that, you know, I've got 15 minutes at lunch, I'm bored, no, you just look good. Um, I'm bored, I'm waiting in line at the, you know, bus station or DMV or airport. Yeah, fold a lot, yeah. Uh, church inserts uh, tend, tend to, I don't, I, I attend church, I uh, conduct services at my work, but we attend church and we get there early so my wife can sing in the practice with the choir, and church inserts die <laughs> at my hands, you know, so yeah, I square them off and we get folded. The project that I'm working on uh, have, is, I didn't want to do conduct it in a way that it matters what you're folding. Okay, there's lots of books out there about uh, ones called Mormon origami, and I've seen Jewish origami, and I've seen uh, Islam doesn't really have origami. They they do what's called tessellation, um, the geometric design that you see it in tile work. And you can do that with paper too, although I don't. Um, those depend on what you fold. What I'm working on is how you fold. What's your intention? And we'll do that with our first exercise. We'll, we'll uh, 
see that there in our first exercise. So in our packet, I'm going to do a centering prayer exercise first. So in our packet, you'll see the first instructions. And, and for those of you just joining, um, don't worry about the symbols right now. Okay, um, We'll explain those in a bit. We're going to do a simple swan. Okay, so you find the diagram for the swan. I also have a source page in the back that has several websites where I uh, got these designs and where you can find other designs. Um, go ahead and take either the magazine page you did, uh, you cut, or one of the pieces of paper. There's plenty of paper in your pack. You can either take a small piece or one of the larger pieces, those are just squares folded in half. Um, so some people feel more comfortable with the larger sheets of paper. With my seniors uh, that I teach, they like the larger seat, uh, sheets of paper because fine motor skills uh, d diminish over time. Mm -hmm. Children also tend to like the larger sheets. Personally, personal preference, I like the little ones too. Um, they're just easier to handle for me. Um, when you're just standing there in an airport or sitting there uh, waiting for something to happen like church service. <laughs> so let's take a look at the swan. We're going to do a centering sort of prayer. Now, of course, centering prayer involves sitting and thinking. Traditionally, you would think a word, God, Jesus, peace. Serenity, you know, oh Lord Jesus, help me through this, you know, type of thing. But with me and my brain, the way, the way my brain works, is if I sit and don't think, I'm going to be thinking. Okay. Now what I notice when I do origami is that as my hands stay busy holding, my thoughts quiet down. And so I can simply be. Now, the Japanese and others in that culture, Zen is, is very prevalent, and they call it mindfulness. Christians, we call it century prayer. It's a different way of looking at it. And sometimes I will, as I fold, keep repeating to myself that special word, God, Jesus, peace, hope, love forgiveness, whatever is on my mind. But for here, let's just be. Let's just center ourselves, allow God to come in to wherever we are, whatever we're feeling in today, right now, whether it's barely awake, thinking about the drive home, whatever, just be here in the moment. So we're going to take a look. Take your paper, if you will. I might use a larger piece of paper so you can see what I'm doing. Our first fold, go ahead and hold it uh, white side up. Origami paper tra traditionally has a white side and a dark uh, colored side. If you're using the magazine, pick a side. It's okay. I'm going to use this just so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to fold, our first fold is going to be corner to corner. So if you hold it as a diamond shape, it may, that, that fold that's in the larger sheets might give you a problem. Don't worry about it. Corner to corner. Try to line them up as much as you can and then get a good solid crease. Sometimes I've found that if I'm particularly stressed out, I'll do an inhale as I line everything up. And as I crease, I'll just exhale. So, and fold with some intention. Okay, so I'm just inhale, exhale. Other times, I'll just breathe normally. It just all depends on where I am in the moment. Sometimes, if I'm particularly angry about something that happened in the morning, <laughs> you have to be careful not to rip your paper. But, now unfold it again. That dashed line on your diagram is what's called a valley fold. And it's named valley fold because you're creating a valley. The opposite of the valley fold would be a mountain fold, which is if you flip your paper over, it looks like a mountain. Simple enough. The arrows 
that you see it's a back and forth kind of thing that means fold and unfold. Now we're going to fold two sides. So if you hold your paper like a diamond with the fold going down the middle, we're going to fold one side to the middle and then the other side. So it'll create a kite form. And some of you have jumped ahead of me, that's fine. Try not to go over that particular fold line. You don't want to do that because it'll become difficult in the next couple of steps. And what, over the years, what I've, another thing I've noticed about origami is that concentration, attention to detail, has improved too. And it turns out, as I've been doing research on it, they use origami in therapy sessions for children with ADD and ADHD. Because, as I noticed, it quiets the mind down and it helps with concentration. It also helps with the notion of forgiving yourself. Because you will make mistakes. You will fill up a recycled bin <laughs> with crumpled bits of paper. That's the other rule that I have. Recycle. Okay? Recycle. Turn your paper over, if you would, please. So the mountain fold, the valley fold, has become a mountain fold. Now, the narrow side, you want to fold the edge to the middle. That's how I came up with the idea of fold to center project because every origami model, you're folding something close to center. So it's kind of a play on words. Square, fold to center yourself, that sort of thing. And then the other side. So a swan, of course, is the same on both sides. So you are creating a mirror image. And again, don't go over that fold line, just go up to it. And I do have extra paper, so if we do have one of those moments when, like I was saying earlier, coffee spills or a rip happens, it's probably one of the great tragedies of folding origami, you, you spend long time trying to pull something intricate and you hear that rip <laughs> towards the end. Okay, 